What's going on everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Hot Seat and not just any type of episode, we've got a special episode because it's in person with the sole proprietor of one of my favorite establishments to come to, Bits and Buttons. We have Dominic here with us, so thank you for joining me. We no also problem. have a special announcement to make, which is why we're here and we're doing it on Dom's behalf and it's gonna be something that is gonna change the landscape, I feel at least, of collecting, especially in the South Florida area. So without further ado, let's go ahead. We're gonna do that a special announcement right now. We're gonna roll the clip. And then after that, we'll be right back to answer or talk more about what's going on. So Absolutely. enjoy the clip. Since the beginning of time, fans have waited, searching, but never finding what they truly have been looking for. Now finally, coming to a South Florida retailer. The legions are here. From the obscure, to the cosmos, and the mythics. Your horseman is now available at Bits and Bubbles. major major news man that yeah. somehow you concocted this whole thing where four horsemen is coming to your store now someone who is not a mythic legions person like myself but i do collect the cosmic legions i am super excited because now i know i have somewhere locally to come to and also for those that want to have the opportunity that can't come local to also purchase you do ship and you do ship worldwide 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 yeah so tell us about how this whole thing came to came to fruition i guess um it's actually been going on for quite some time i know mythic legion's not, it's not the great announcement everybody's what we're waiting for everybody's waiting to hear like you moved into like a twenty thousand square foot area but that's not that, that that's coming soon yeah <laughs> soon when, when soon. he hit when this guy hits the lotto soon but um <laughs> It's we've been we've been working on this for quite some time. I mean, there's other stores, you know, throughout the country that have Mythic Legions, but one of the things people don't realize it's not you don't just wave a wand and say, okay, well, I'm gonna start carrying this product. There's more that goes into it. Um, there, there's finances that go into it. There's space allocation that goes into it. Um, a lot of things, a lot of moving parts had to happen um, because I. One thing about me, and, and you know this already, I'm very methodical. I like to plan things out. I don't like to just go head first into something, and then next thing you know, I'm, the, the straw's coming out the, the top, and I'm, I'm, I'm breathing for air. Um, but, you know, Jeff Slap Happy was an intricate part to it. Um, you know, having him, you know, locally, not really local, but just having him here um, to, to bounce ideas off of when it comes to that product line because he's pretty much in he's pretty deep into it himself right um and then our and then our good friend yeah big dub big dubby ryan big, big dubby was a very intricate part to getting this into place um you know he has an in with the legions he has an in with that community so you know getting in touch with jeremy who's who's one of the main guys over there and really talking things over to really make this happen man and it's one of those things where there is no retailers down here um, there is literally not a single retailer in South Florida, so South Florida that has them yeah. that has Mythic Legions. The closest store to us is actually in Jacksonville, Jacksonville, which right. is about six hours away. So it's not the greatest news in the world, but for anybody that collects toys, anybody that collects action figures knows how much of a big deal Mythic Legions are. We get asked that question all the time. Oh, are you going to carry Mythic Legions? Are you going to carry Mythic Legions? And we kind of been... You know, for what now? It's been official for about a month. Yeah. And we've just been kind of waiting. We knew the mystery box thing was going on with them. Right. So our shipment was actually put on pause because of that. So we knew that was going on. So we just got our tracking information. All that stuff will be landed. So when we open up on Thursday, they will be placed out on the store shelves Ooh. for our locals. Ooh. And, you know, we are actually going to be doing a bunch of stuff this weekend for our locals with the Mythic Legions. So if you are local to South Florida area and you caught this video, be sure to stop by anytime this weekend and ask about the uh, 
the free gift that you may get. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so offering, free gifts. offering up free gifts. For um, this weekend only, though. Yeah, and then also, if you guys aren't also aware too, again, he will also have them up on his website. And you can also use the code Seth Bayer. 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 It's Bayer. I like Bayer. And you save yourself 10% checkout. Why not? Take advantage of it. And again, he does ship worldwide. Worldwide. Yes. So take advantage of that because a lot of places don't actually offer world wide shipping yes so take it take advantage of that and again save yourself 10 percent. so it's totally worth it but i'm stoked i know i'm excited again i'm yeah. a, I'm, I'm more into the cosmics myself i like the spacesuits guys so i can't wait to see what comes in because i will definitely be here to partake in all of that now what's coming in what's going to be available on thursday we are going to have a vast variety of legions we are going to have uh one of the latest waves in we're gonna have some all-stars in we're gonna have some cosmic in, in. we're gonna have a pretty wide variety of uh just four horsemen products in general to start off with we do have some waves that have been pre-ordered already so there's been a little bit of an investment in the company that we've made uh going forward now this is going to be something, I may be going out on a limb saying it, but don't look for anybody else down here to carry the product line. Um, this is something that was talked about. Um, we are not looking to oversaturate the market, or they are not over looking to oversaturate the market. It diminishes the return of the brand. It diminishes the value of the brand. So that's something that they're very cautious of themselves. Right, right. So this is going to be something, if you're in South Florida... Uh, we're basically going to be the only retailer carrying this product, which is pretty, pretty, at least in Broward County. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that. I would be excited about that too. I mean, again, it's, it's for those that know, for those that have, for those have seen, it's a very elite product. It is a very top high end figure of excellent quality articulation and accessories. So obviously no better landing spot than to be here at Bits and Buttons. But that was just one part of <clears throat> what we wanted to talk about. I also wanted to do a deep dive and give you guys a more better look into what it takes to actually operate bits and buttons, what Dom goes through on a daily basis. What's it like to be an owner and an operator of, of a, I wouldn't say adult collectible toy store, but That's you know, definitely not the word to use. No, but you know, but your, your, but your average customers are more of the adult. Correct. The adult side. So, Obviously, diving just right into it, what made you want to go ahead and open up a store like this and, and you know, I guess if, if we're going to go in that direction, I guess maybe live out, you know, something that you wanted to do of, you know, opening up your own toy store being your, being or just being a, a business owner of so, some sort, because I'm sure there had to be some thought into saying, hey, you know what, I want to open up a toy store. There's so many different avenues i could take this um and a lot of people especially i hear it every day because of what we do um, people come in here and it's like oh man like this is something that i want to do you know and I, I you know i'm so envious of you and, and you know you hear all those things that that's their fantasy or that's their their end game so to speak for me it really wasn't about that and and i don't want to come across as being condescending or arrogant or anything like that I was never really a collector, so to speak. Now, there were things I collected. I did collect video games. I collected, I had a very extensive Super Nintendo collection. I had a very extensive uh, Sega Genesis, not Sega Genesis, Sega Master System collection. Um, I did collect Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles was my thing. Um, now, did I have this massive room full of Ninja Turtles? No, I didn't. I just collected higher end pieces. I always went after the pieces that were just in that, that top tier. You know, your grail pieces. I was big into collecting grail pieces. Um, but I didn't get these things with the, the ambition of opening up a toy store. I've always had a business mind. I've always had a business way of doing things growing up. And, you know, you hear it a lot in our industry where, you know, I'm here for the collector. I'm here for the collector. Uh, a store by a collector for a collector. And, and you hear that a lot. Or, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm trading and bartering and, and I'm working with my customers because because I'm a collector too well you know I don't collect anything um it's it's all about business for me and people will say well you you can't it can't be about business all the time well it is about business all the time because if you're a collector yourself and you're running a business you can't as the old saying goes you can't have your cake and eat it too 
Okay. Can't get high on your own supply. <laughs> and and there's a lot of things that go into it, you know, and, and one of the biggest things is my family. My family is one of the most intricate parts of this operation because it's not really about my, my two boys, but it's about my wife. It's that my wife really wanted to do something as a family. You know, my son, my oldest son, who's now going to be 15, dad, let's go open up a toy store. Because for us, it was getting into a bond together, you know, and being able to go to Toys R Us every weekend and bond together and collect Disney cars. And, and that's what collecting is about. You know, so it, sharing the experience, it's sharing it's the experience, experience and sharing time with your family, whether it's your grandchildren, whether it's your wife, whether it's your kids, you know, that's why you do it, you know, or you do it to relive a childhood. So when I hear people say, well, I'm a collector and I think about collectors, you're, I know this is somewhat PG. It's a, cl it's a cliche. It's, it's a, a cliche. It's, 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 it's and, a cliche. And to be honest, like you're full of shit, because if it wasn't about the business, then why are you selling product? If it wasn't about, if it was about, if you're in it for the collector, then how come your prices don't reflect that? You know, and again, I'm not trying to come across as condescending, but, or, or I don't want to toot my own horn, but our prices in the store, it, it's, we have probably the cheapest prices around, at least locally. And even when you go online, you're going to find our prices to be the cheapest. You know, and I'm I'm not saying I'm not a collector, but I think f for the collector. Right. You know, I think it's not a matter of the collector. I think for the consumer, because when it boils down to it, I come from a back, I come from a history of retail, so I understand you have to put the consumer first, not the collector first. Right. Put the consumer first, and the consumer nowadays are looking for value. You know, they don't care if the card's unpunched. They don't care if there's a vein or a crease. In our industry. There's a very, very small percentage of people that care about that stuff. And the ones that truly care about it are going to go out themselves and look for it. The ones that, that say they do are the ones that are just trying to get over it. Obviously, so, so obviously family is one of the key things. Um, also, being able to create an environment for where, you know, people like myself can come in. They feel like, you know, they're getting uh, products at a reasonable price and, and you're building, you're, you're building a community around that. So people can say, Hey, I'm coming to bits and buttons and I know exactly what I'm going to get when I walk in the door. So the store's coming up on being open for five years, which right. is fantastic. So congratulations. Um, you know, to stay in business, you know, now is kind of a cha kind of a challenge. So I'm sure over the course of the past five years, you've had your challenges. But in the beginning, what were some of the initial challenges you faced getting the business up and running and getting it to where it's at now? Getting people in the door. Getting people to acknowledge who we are. And that's not just foot traffic, that's people online. It's easy for anybody to sit back and go, I want to be a business owner. People don't realize what it takes to get there. Um, I'll never forget, with the first week we were open, one of my neighbors um, in the plaza, they own an insurance company, and his mom walked in, and, dude, the doors were open, and my head was on the counter, and I was just knocked out, cold, sleeping, <sighs> just sleeping, you know, and I just, she's like, you're all right? I'm like, yeah, 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 I'm good, I'm good. You know, I was, I kid you not, working my full-time job, um, 50 hours a week, I was doing that, and then I was coming here juggling the store for like another 40 hours a week and it's exhausting and it's stressful because you're saying to yourself like man i built this and it's just like okay well where are the people at like we all have this mindset that you open a door and people are gonna be out there waiting for you it doesn't work that way right right it doesn't work that way so you have to find out okay what do i need to do next to now i i've, I've already put a product in the store I, product that I think is going to sell, but nobody's coming in. Nobody knows who I am. So that was probably the biggest challenge was really like trying to figure out like, okay, what are consumers looking for? How can I make this place cool? How can I make this place um, inviting for people? And and then COVID hits. Yeah. Like yeah. not even, we opened up in August and not even a few months later, COVID hits. So now I'm like, okay, now what? So now I got to figure that out. Yeah. COVID was a big big challenge for just any, yeah, any business to owner to try to overcome because you got to think about okay there's restrictions people have to stay home right you know they people aren't being allowed out 
and and what what can you do to still keep the doors technically open in a sense? Right. And, and and it was tough. And and I'm one of those people. Even in, I hate to say I use the word past life. And when I say past life, it's not I'm not reincarnated, but it's my past career. And I was always known as that person that I'm just relentless. And you have to be relentless in anything you do, whether you're an athlete, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're an artist, you have to go after what you want. Because when it all boils down to it, if you fail, you just fa you, you, you're only failing because you fail to try. Right. You know, you fail to to see the bigger picture. You fail to try different things. It's we sat here and we're wondering, okay, what could we do? What could we do? What could we do? And we were already doing Facebook Marketplace, not Facebook Marketplace. We're already doing Facebook Lives right. and things like that. So I said, screw it. You know, I'm not going to sit here and allow COVID to to shut us down. Right. You know, it sucks. Like, yeah. what are we going to do? We're not an established business. We don't have an established customer base. So for us, it was like, man, like we had to do something. And like I told Cindy, like we're gonna we gotta figure this out because I'm not gonna fail. I'm not gonna allow this to go down and this be the end of us and end of what we've tried to do. So we ended up doing Facebook Lives, and I was already doing Facebook Lives previously. I wasn't doing it as much, but I was doing it here and there on the Facebook groups, and it just blew up. And this was like really before everybody really started doing Facebook Lives. And we were hitting at least 200, 250 people per live stream. Wow. You know, we were getting people from Australia, people from Germany, people from like all over the globe. And I mean, we were cranking out product. Well, just because the world was shut down doesn't mean that people wanted to stop collecting. Correct. You know, people had to find and and uh, an alternate, you know, method of being able to buy stuff. Yeah, you know, websites were still up and running, but people really weren't there probably to fulfill the orders and get the orders out and, as and fast. And that's the thing. You know? This was before the checks started rolling in. Yeah. People was like, oh, well, everybody had extra money. No, at this time, there was no extra money. Yeah. Nobody was getting checks at yeah, this point. there was point. no stimulus checks. So in. at this point, it was more along the lines of the entertainment arts, the big bad toy stores, and, and well, the Star Wars one that shut down, whatever that one was. Um, these stores, these online marketplaces, and just Targets and Walmarts, they were not operating. Right. So, and then shipping containers were shut down. So there was no product coming in. So it wasn't about stimulus checks. It was about people fiending to get product. So one of the things that really kick-started like, the motions for us was me and my relentlessness. Because I was getting on Entertainment Earth. I was getting on my other distributors. I'm like, hey, listen, I need product. Oh, well, you know, listen, I, I don't care. That's your problem. That's not my problem. <laughs> you know, and, and I was rocking the boat. Like, I was rocking the boat with some of these companies to get product. And, and believe it or not, because of the whole COVID situation, like that's how we got in with Hasbro. Because again, like we're, you know, I don't want to say word got out, but like people started reaching out and I'm like, listen, like this is what's going on. Because I was rocking the boat so much to get product into the store. Because we were moving product so fast because you weren't able to go to Walmart. You were not able to go to Target. Yeah. EE was out of stock on stuff. Big Bad was out of stock. Everybody's waiting for shipments. So I was doing whatever I could do because again, that's just how I am. And it still reflects today in our operations. Like, when I get new product, I'm just like, oh, how do you get stuff early? It's not that I'm getting stuff early. It's I don't wait. I don't wait, dude. Like, if something, if I get, gets dropped off by the FedEx or by UPS or if I'm picking up product, as soon as it crosses that threshold, it's posted and it's on the website. There's no layover of three months or two months processing. No, no, no. Let's go. Let's go. If I spend $20 today... That I'm gonna make twenty dollars tomorrow. So be, you know, it's great that you're you were able to thrive through through COVID and all that stuff, and and um, you know how the stores still been in business for this long and everything still keeps going strong, you know. But I think there's more to it than that because it's like you know we formed a friendship, you know, through through me coming in and everything like that, and you know, and there you ask me sometimes about like you know, hey, what am I interested in? Hey, what do you think about you know if I bring this into the store? So. That leads me into this. How do you go about, I guess, like in a roundabout way, curating the store? Like, what do you like? What do you want to do? Like, what are you always constantly yeah. thinking about bringing in to keep things, you know, fresh and and to to keep collectors, ha you know, to keep collectors happy? Like, I guess in a roundabout way, it's curating the store. You know, like keeping. Stop. 
Stop. Uh, I'm getting. What's the opposite of goosebumps? I don't know. Is there like bumps? Bumps. Like it's bumps. like it's like when you're cold, like it shrivels yeah. up, right? Yeah. Like the word curate, like nauseates me. Okay. Like I hate hearing the word. Oh, we curating this stuff. No, no, no. I don't curate anything. So when I hear people use the word curate, I'm not curating anything. There's nothing here to curate. I don't have a World War II sword. You know, I don't have a rocket firing fet. You know, so to hear that word, it's like, oh. and that word has been like thrown around down here for quite some time now. So well, that's not something that well, I like that word. Well, well, that word, so so that's funny because the word for me that does that is subordinate. Yeah, curate. I is hate just... that. I hate that. Okay, so, so you know what? Let's... I'm not a museum. I tell this to people all the time. When people go, man, you got a great collection here. This is a great, like a museum. No, 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 this isn't a museum. I'm not in Las Vegas. I don't take $5 at the door to come in and look around. Yeah. You know, oh. everything for here is for sale, except for the Alps. So it's not a museum. It's not a curation of product. You know, it's it's a store. It's a business, you know. But to answer your question. All right, so so what do you do to stay up with the tre with, with, with the trends to keep things fresh in the store? Um. And again, going back to the mindset, going back to, you know, I'm a collector for a collector. You can't have that mentality. And, you know, I try to stay off social media as much as I can. As time has progressed in the five years, I've gotten further and further away from social media because of the toxicity that goes on within social media. It's it's a curse and, and, and you know, a blessing at yeah. the same time. Um, there's been a couple of times I've caught myself on social media and I, and I catch these guys that are posting you know, in toy groups, and, and I saw a post not too long ago about a guy who, there was a store going out of business, and it was an anime store, and he was posting in the group asking, hey man, what do you guys, what can you guys tell me about the store? I'm thinking about buying out the product in the store, but I don't know anything about it, and I, the comments that were coming from these dudes, and these are grown men, and I sit back and I go, this is why I'm a business, and this is why you're a pompous, because you will always be a pompous, and and, and it's just like you have you can't have a mindset that's of what I like or what I think people want. They're sitting here going, "Who collects that anim anime animania stuff?" Oh, anime is oh. a huge thing. Anime, huge anime is a huge, huge thing. Now, granted, I don't I don't collect Exa anime exactly. I don't collect it, but, but somebody but, does. But, but somebody does. Just, somebody again, does. What, 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 what's the what's the what's the saying? Uh, there, there, there's something out there for every correct for, 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 for everyone. Correct. You know? And it's just I don't get into this stuff, and I'm not a fanboy of anything, and you know that right now. Right. People say, "Oh, you must love." No, I don't love this. Oh, when you see the celebrity. You must get no, no, no that, that that's it's like I live in Florida and I don't go to the beach, you know that's the <laughs> that's the anal, an, uh, analogy I get people right. like oh you must go to the beach no I don't you just become blah with everything yeah you know so for me I don't get giggly over anything what I get giggly over is when somebody comes into the store and they're floored at what they find right you know whether it's something they've been looking for or something that they can't believe they saw again or or you know I have. Kids that come in there with their parents and they're like, dad, 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 look. Mm -hmm. Like, to me, I get my rocks off from that. I mean, yeah. I mean, how many times have I come into the store and you've been like, hey, look at what I just got in. And I'm like, what? Yeah, it's like <laughs> people get excited for that. So when I hear other stores go, oh, I'm not going to get into that. Oh, that's just stupid. Nobody's buying that. Comic Con. That's the word. Yeah. Comic Con. Who buys Comic Con stuff? Mm -hmm. And I'm reading these, these, these comments. I'm like. Like, and I hate to say that you're not my customer. You're not. Yeah, you're my customer, but you to to, to have that mentality is is ignorant. Right. And I don't want people to say, well, you just no. There's a fine line between ignorance and stupidity. Now, if you don't know something, then just say you don't know, but don't bash something that you have no clue because the vintage toy market, and and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that not limb. I'm not going on a limb on anything. I'm saying it. The vintage toy market is a niche market. Unfortunately, 40-year-old men are not going to be 40-year-old men anymore. Okay? So everything is generational. Right. The anime community is a far larger community than the action figure community. Right. By far. Huge. Now, whether you want to dress up like Naruto or walk around with things on your arms, that's up to you. I don't know these characters. But I'm not going to hop on a bandwagon and say, 
oh, well, I'm, I'm now, I'm now watching Dragon Ball Z for 40 hours. No, no, no I listen, I, I'm a business. Yeah. You carry a little bit of everything I for I carry everyone. a little bit of everything. I watch trends. I try to be ahead of the trends. Right. Because one of the things that's going to make you successful in a business, it's it's trying to stay ahead of the game. Trying to stay ahead of the, of the, of the trend before it actually becomes a trend. You know? And not waiting for somebody else to find success and for you to piggyback off that success. Right. You know? Because there's a lot of businesses that they can't think outside the box. So they need other people to think outside the box for them before they take that chance. You know, when we expanded our anime section. Now we have stores in our area, but we also have one thing about South Florida is people don't realize this isn't Ohio where there's vintage toy stores everywhere. You know, this isn't New York City where you can get stuff anywhere. Right. You know, down here, there's a lot of comic shops. There's a lot of anime shops. We have anime superstore. We have two anime superstores down here. Um, there's another one in Lauderhill, not too far from like, they got some funky name. And then you have Tate's, who's huge into anime and K-pop and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's been around and he's been around forever. And, and you don't cover that, but yeah. they're big in that community. Then you have, um, who else does anime? Uh, Flynn's, Flynn's Arcade yeah. does a lot of anime. So it's, the market's there. Now, what I try to do is, I try to go in a direction, okay, what do they do what are they not doing that I can do? So one of the things that I did, because one of the things about the anime stuff, it's cheap. It's import stuff. A lot of times it's knockoffs. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to go in a different direction. And we went, and again, I'm known for action figures. So I went with Bandai stuff, and I ordered every Dragon Stars, every anime heroes that's available. And you're talking 50, 60 SKUs? Yeah, One Piece, Naruto, Dragon Ball. Yeah, I you know, mean, you, you name them. Yeah. What you see behind me in Star Wars is what yeah. I did with, with the, the Dragon Ball stuff. Right. You know, and I carried like the Funko Pops, but then I, you know, we're, we're getting out of that, you know, and then we started getting into like the Van Presto statues and those mini statues, and we tried to dabble in that, and it just wasn't going anywhere. And that's when we said, okay, well, there's a market for it, but then like the Van Presto stuff. That's the stuff you see at the conventions all the time. Right. And a lot of times people don't realize it's it's just, I don't want to say it's knockoffs, but it's not imported. I mean, it's imported, but they're getting it like AliExpress type stuff. Oh, okay. So I was like, okay, well, nobody's doing action figures. So let me do action figures. And people say, oh, well, you got the, and again, I hear the ignorance of people, you know, on social media and the comments on our social media, on our social media about, oh, you got Walmart figures. Well, uh, unfortunately... Because they're referring to the figures that we have compared to SH Figure Arts. Right. So, and what people don't realize is SH Figure Arts with the Bandai, there is no money to be made on that stuff. Yeah, the margin is The very margins little, are horrible. Very little, yeah. Horrible. I'm paying $70 to, to, to sell it for 85 So, I, I'm going to pay $70 to, to make 15 That just makes no sense. Yeah. So, I'm not going to carry it. And I'm not going to give in to the customer just to say, to get you in the door... Because I'm really not making fifteen. I'm making like five. Yeah, because after shipping and and bills and you, credit you card processing stuff. charges and all that stuff, yeah, you're, you're losing lo money. Yeah. So I say screw it. I'm gonna go with the the Dragon Stars, the Anime Heroes, because the other stores around here aren't pushing that product. Right. And if they are, it's like your typical Walmart, your Targets. They have a small variety of them. And it's hard to keep with keep up with the big box. Correct. Retailers. So when I see those comments, oh, you're carrying Walmart anime figures. Well, the last time I went to Walmart, I saw one hook. With one figure. With one figure on yep. it. I didn't see 50 SKUs. Oh, no. Well, trust me, they see that all the time on the hunt videos. When so, I go into the, get to the NECA Funko section and they see that there's nothing. Correct. There's nothing. And it's just... So you have to try to, you can't worry about what other people are selling. You got to think about what they're not selling. Like, and there's things that mean you talk about and that I won't speak publicly of because I've learned through the years that I don't want nobody listening. Yeah. Because the last thing that somebody, we do, somebody taking your concept, your I idea, your suggestion. Yeah. And again, it's it's you know, again, you're 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 a business person. Like you said, you're Correct. trying to you're trying to stay ahead of the curve. You're trying to, you know, think of things that nobody else is doing. Of course, you know, that's like you know, that's like going to a cook and saying, Hey, your recipe. I want your recipe for that for exactly. that for that soup. You can't exactly you can't, you can't do it. You can't exactly. do it. Exactly. Look at KFC. Oh, what's yeah. the secret recipe? The Kentucky yeah. fried chicken. It's yeah. made in Kentucky. <laughs> so we've already discussed, you know, 
a little bit about the business. Um, you know, we also just talked about some of the challenges that you faced. Um, we've also talked about what you kind of do as far as, um, you know, keeping up with trends and things like that. But one of the things that, that, that I'm curious about is what do you find most rewarding about the business itself? The fact that I'm able to do this as a full-time gig, so to speak, um, not only the fact that I'm able to do this full time, make a living off of it, able to travel, do different things, but the fact that I'm able to do this with my wife is another thing. And a lot of people don't realize this, but working with your wife or your husband for that matter, Lord help us. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you that. But, you know. Careful what you say because she's in the store. Yeah, she is actually in the store. <laughs> But, you know, the fact that I'm able to do that with her and the fact that we're both able to do it full time is very rewarding. And again, it has its challenges. Um, it has its challenges from, on a personal level. It also has its challenges on a financial level because there's no, you know, I don't have a side gig, dude. You know, I, I don't have a side business. I don't do real estate on the side. I don't paint houses on the side. I don't have, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, or a this doctor. is it. This is your sole source of income. Correct. And the fact that, I'm able to do this with her and we're able to, to do this together and really focus solely on that is rewarding in itself because you'll see a lot of people that, Oh, my wife's a teacher. She helps me on the side. Well, my wife's a nurse and she comes in on the side or vice versa. Right. You know, no, like they, they we hustle. This like, is it. It's, this is yeah. like in order for us to put bread on the table, we both need to be here. We both need to be grinding, you know? So the fact that we're able to do that together I think it's an accomplishment in itself. The fact that, you know, we've we've busted our asses to really put ourselves in a position from a, from the business side to be able to do that, to right. not ha rely on somebody else. And again, there's weeks where you know, th like this week, this week we're in we're we're facing some challenges this week, but we're facing challenges because I'm putting us in a position later on for something else. Right. You know, another rewarding thing for me is, you know. Building, I don't want to say building relationships because I don't want to come across as being phony. Right. Because one thing about me is I'm not I'm not a phony individual. I, I shoot straight from the hip. Right. I'm very direct. Um, but I have customers that come in here, and I have kids of my own. But I have a customer by the name of Cody. Um, he used to be a customer by the name of Dominic. The young kids that come in here, believe it or not, I get more joy out of dealing with those kids that come in here, the adolescents, the, the five-year-olds, the six-year-olds, the 10-year-olds that come in here and just the joy on their face, like I have more fun with them. We have another gentleman that comes in here by the name of Chris. Chris is handicapped. Chris is on the spectrum. When you see Chris, you kind of, you'll, he's a big dude. He's like my height. He's, he's a little stocky. When you see him, you're like, man, like if you don't know Chris, you're like, like what's wrong with him? Like he's, you know, he's yeah. talking to himself. He's doing his thing. But when he comes in here, it's like, hey, Chris, hey, guys. And he's just bouncing around. He's picking up stuff. And I have that one. He's rambling off all the stuff that he had. Like, I get more joy out of the customers, Chris, out of Cody, out of Don. I get more joy from those customers because they're not buying a figure. They're buying an experience. They're buying an experience. They're they're bonding with their dads. They're bonding with their mom, mom moms. I'm not, I'm not from England, but <laughs> they're bonding with their moms or their grandparents. Right. You know, because for me, going back to what I talked about was this store came about because of what I did with my son. Because every weekend we went to Toys R Us and we looked for cars that he did not have. Right. You know, so for me, that was my way of bonding with or, my son. Or even of well, like when you were a kid and your dad would take you to Toys yes. R Us or KB, K, KB Toys Correct. or, you know, any of those stores. and. Just you would get so excited in the car driving. Oh, we're going to the toy store, Correct. you know, and it's like, yeah, I, I get that, you know, because again, like when I come into places like this or any other places that are kind of like a specialty place like this, I come in and I'm like, I'm instantly taken back Correct. to a better point in my life where it brings me to my childhood and then it unlocks certain memories, yep. you know, and, and things like that. And, and, you know, and, and again, that, that's, that's like one of the big one of the mm -hmm. big things. I mean, like if that was me, that would be the you yeah. know the thing most rewarding. Coming in, seeing the little kids smile, just the awe, like yeah. oh my god, there's so much stuff I don't even know where to begin, and it's just I, I get it. 
one thing about me, it's it's funny because people can look at me on the camera when they do your videos and, yeah. and they see one side of me. Yeah, we're joking, we're joking, we're having yes, a good time, you know, we're, we're you, you know, we're laughing, we're conversing with each other. But yeah, but they don't they don't see the the I guess you want to say like the more like humane yeah, hu humane side. You correct. Know? It's like, or you have people that come in here and they deal business with me, and it's right. like, oh, he's always so serious, and you can't be so serious, you can't right. be uptight. You don't know me. You know, I tell people all the time, you don't really know who I am, and and I don't, I'm not one of those. I'm not loud and obnoxious. You know, I may appear that way in your videos, yeah. but because again, it's for cameras. It's for, it's for fun. You know, but I don't, people walk in this store, I'm not loud or obnoxious, I'm not bragging. You know, some of the most successful people are the most, are the quietest. Right, the more, the most humble. The, the most, most humble, humble people. Exactly. So when these kids are here, Cody was just in here the other day with his mom. And it's funny because his mom came in this time. And I was like, Mom, what are you doing here? And she's just like, hey, they dragged me out the house. I was like, Cody, what are you doing? And I don't care about what mom's name is. I don't care about what dad's name is. Yeah. It's irrelevant. I need to make Cody feel important. Right. Because he's the one that comes in here once or twice a month because he did good in school. You know? And, and here he is. And guess what? Guess what he collects? Wrestling. He collects wrestling. Guess who his favorite wrestler is? Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes. <laughs> because he has his he has his name, Cody. Cody. You can't forget that deep down, this exists because of kids, not because of adults. So you have to, because at the end of the day, when that kid Cody grows up, he's gonna pass it along to his kids. Exactly. Just like I, just like wouldn't you guys see me come in here with, with little with, little, 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 little pop? Listen, there's been times off camera where I don't even, I'm just here and I'm not even filming, and. Cindy or or you or like oh here you could go ahead and take one take one of these and you give yeah. it and you give it to, I don't I don't ask and I never expect no of but course. you guys do it out of the kindness of your heart and when you hand that stuff to him and he gets like all excited he's like and then like later in the week when are we going back to bits again you know I want to go back to bits yeah. take me to bits take me to bits you know it's you're 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 cultivating an, an, an correct an environment and it's not just with you people want to say yeah. oh well, that's because he's a, no no no, no. it has you. it has nothing to, listen I before know. i even started filming filming in here fyi before i even filmed in here i came in because i always i always do my research and the thing before i came i struck up a conversation with dom and you know me and dom hit it right off and i was like you know what this seems to be a place where you know people should know what people should know about and you know here we are five years yeah but you know five years later and again that's why it's i come here because not only because now we're you know we're, we're, we're friends but you guys make me my son you know medium-sized popping the thing you guys invite us in you make it you make it an, an experience every time and and if more stores and more businesses did that you they, they they would be surprised just how you know the the repeat business would come in would, would come in from that you know treat pe basically treat people the way you want to be treated and and that's and that's what you do and i think you do a fantastic job of of doing that so we've touched on a lot of topics and you know one of the things i wanted to touch on is you know things that you do especially because there are a lot of local businesses around the area what are the things you do to help you, I guess, combat in that or or try to, you know, make sure not that, you know, you're the best game in town, but things that you do that help you stand out to where people are like, you know what? I'm going to go back to bits. Again, I think I said this earlier. Um, I don't want to come across as being arrogant or I don't want to toot my own horn, so to speak. Um, but one thing to look at it, or one way to look at it is, uh, and it's a quote, it's better to fail at originality than to succeed, than to succeed at imitation. Okay. Um, we talked about it earlier. I, you got to think outside the box, man. You got to be aggressive. You can't wait for somebody else you can't look for somebody else. You can't look for success in somebody else's shoes. Okay. So for me, when it comes to competition, I look at it this way. If, if you're in a race, okay, you get to that starting line, you know, what's the first thing you do? You, you put your foot down, you put your hand down and immediately as a person that's racing, you look to your left and you look to your right. Why? 
why does it matter who's standing to your left? Why does it matter who's standing to your right? Put your blinders on, look straight ahead, because no matter how many obstacles are standing in front of you, you're the person that has to cross the finish line. It's irrelevant if the person to your left or to your right is, is 10 pounds heavier than you, that's bigger than you, or the person to your right is the loudest person in the room. I'm not gonna be the loudest person in the room because at the end of the day, I'm gonna let my silence prove what it takes to be successful. You know, it, it's, it's easy to consume yourself in social media and easy to, to sit back and look at, oh my God, what's this person doing? Because let me tell you something, and, and we've had private conversations before, um, and I don't talk about this a lot because again, I don't put myself out there to the public because the last thing I want the, the public to see is a, an individual that's angry or an individual that's jealous because really that's not who I am. But deep down, when it comes to competition, there's going to be competition in every industry you go to, whether you're a sports athlete, whether you're a chef, whether you're, you're a police officer, yeah. you know, there's always somebody that's going for that spot, you know, that wants that, wants to be in a starting lineup or wants that lieutenant position, you know, and, and in my scenario, there's people that want to be in my position. You know, when I opened up the store, I didn't look at Tate's, I didn't look at Corker, I didn't know past, present, future. And to be quite honest, dude, I didn't know any of them existed other than Tate's. So, and I visited Tate's maybe five times in my entire life. So to sit here and say that I want to be like them, that wasn't the case. I wanted to be like myself. Right. My biggest competition is the reflection in the mirror that stares back at me every single day. My biggest competition is my goals. My biggest competition is my failures. That's my competition. I can't worry about who's buying product from somebody else because like you said, I need to create an environment. I need to stand by who I am. I need to stand by my associates, whether it's my wife, whether it's Aaliyah, whether it's Archie, uh, when, when Alex was here, when Allison was here, you know, I need to stand by those people because, you know, the competition is, is within these four walls and we're competing with ourselves. I can't worry about everybody else. Right. I got to stay on that track and I got to leap those hurdles. And you know what? If I do everything that I'm supposed to do, guess what? I'm going to beat the loudest guy in the room. I'm going to beat the fastest guy in the room. And I'm going to end up at the end of the track. Because you know what? When I step to that starting line, I'm going like this. I can't worry about those other people. Now, don't get me wrong. And again, I don't want to sound like, like one of those. But I already know those other people are worried about what I'm doing. Because when I do things, people are always watching what I do. Because it's... I try to, again, I try not to, I'm not reinventing the wheel here, but I try to do things differently. Like, for example, the start of this video, we announced Mythic Legions. Nobody else in South Florida has tried to carry Mythic Legions. And I'm not calling out any individual stores. There's a lot of stores down there. Yeah. But bet your bottom dollar over the next few months, I guarantee you, people are like, oh my God, he's doing that and he's selling that product. And we want it on that too. You know, why? Why? Again, to each his own but that's the competition right you're not competing with a sale for me you competing with yourself you've already failed you've already failed because you should have faced that yourself you should have thought about that ahead. you should have thought, thought about, about it ahead that. of time yeah, of course so your biggest competition and no matter who, what you do in life and no matter who you are is always going to be yourself it's always going to be that jiminy cricket on one side yeah. and that, that devil on the other side yeah. and unfortunately you gotta trust your gut, and you gotta, you gotta. Again, I'm gonna go talk about it again. You gotta go down that that path, and you gotta run down that that track, because like I said, you know what? It's better to fail in originality than it is to succeed in somebody else's imitation.
All right, guys, that is going to wrap up another episode of The Hot Seat. Dom, thanks so much for having me in the store to do this in person because, again, I always love to do stuff in person. I feel that's where the the best comes because you get to see me and how I react. I get to see you and how I react. And, you know, again, it's just the way the interview plays off. Um, guys, I will leave the link in the description below for Bits and Buttons Instagram and also their website. And when you're watching this video, it will be Monday or Tuesday. But make sure Thursday, if you're local, your asses are here in the store to check out all the new Mythic Legions and Cosmic Legions. And also check out the website as well. And also make sure you come in this weekend because if you do purchase Mythics or Cosmics, you will get a something. You'll something. get something. You'll get something. We something. don't know what it is, but we in order for you to find is. out, you got to come you in. You got to come in. So mention a video. Yeah, of course. Mention, yeah, absolutely. Mention a video. So guys, as always, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe and all that other good stuff. And maybe next time you might just find yourself in the hot seat.